I, I, I know I referenced that um, during the media detox, I, uh, I started in the mornings um, reading through the epistles, um, which I had just done earlier in the year, end of last year, early in the year, but I started reading through them again in, uh, in the Passion Translation. And um, there, there's, there's, there's two kind of things that really stood out to me as I read through several of them again in the Passion Translation and just kind of the terminology that it uses. One of those things was just kind of the, uh, and I don't mean this in a negative, like sinful sense, but at least in the Passion Translation, the humanity of Paul. And I mean humanity in the sense of seeing him not as some superhero, super Christian, but as being a human being with feelings and emotions. And one of the things I shared this at the, I think the ministry day we did several months ago, but uh, in particular reading Romans chapter 16, the last chapter of the book of Romans, and, and reading Paul's greetings to uh, a bunch of different people and, and just deeply impacted that how he, as the Apostle Paul, would take this time to express gratitude and appreciation to a lot of pretty unknown people. And the second thing that really kind of stood out, and this really kind of ties in with this evening and what I feel like the Lord gave me this morning, but the, the second thing that really st stood out to me as I reread through the epistles is how much practical, down-to-earth, daily living stuff is in the epistles. There's obviously a lot of, you know, we, we, we get a lot of things about church structure, church government from the epistles, Ephesians chapter 4, evangelists, pastors, teachers, prophets, apostles. We, we get all of that from Ephesians, and, and there's other things throughout, and kind of, in essence, what I preach Sunday night about the body. and So, so there are things like that, and, and obviously there's some things in there that are you know, very important, profound, biblical principles, spiritual warfare, and, 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 and spiritual gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, and, and, and all of that stuff we find throughout the epistles, and especially in this context, Paul's epistles. But, I mean, I, I mean he's like daily down-to-earth, bosses and their employees, wasn't the terminology that Paul used in that day, but... What it was, it's what the principle he's talking about, and 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 fornication, and and sexual relations, and 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 how we treat one another is is just as much throughout the epistles as as I, I used. I think I preached it recently, but you know the the, the same guy that was in the third heaven. All of these, you know, amazing visions and experiences. That same guy is the one who is giving us instructions about daily living and, and, and how we're supposed to treat one another and, 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 and attitudes and, and all of those things. I, I find myself more and more challenged on a personal level and then as a, as, as a pastor challenged and disturbed by how quickly we are to embrace all of those exciting spiritual topics. We don't want to waste our time with that other stuff. And being apostolic is not just about our doctrine. And truly being apostolic is not just about being in the flow of the Spirit when we gather together. Now, those are all, I'm not saying those, but there's more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> but so early this morning, there was a, there was a, uh, in, the, in, the, in my 
teen years and into my 20s especially, uh, I would say that uh, throughout that phase and probably to a degree still to this day, uh, but definitely throughout that phase, my, my two favorite groups, um, Christian music groups throughout that time was the Winans and Phillips, Craig, and Dean. I would go back and forth between both of those groups for my music listening and um, just kind of nothing like either one of those groups, very different styles and um, uh, needless to say, but, uh, and so uh, Phillips, Craig, and Dean had a, had a song um, and the title of that song is will you love Jesus more? Now I will tell you, if you don't know this song, if you were to go look it up or if you were to just simply even go look up the lyrics, I will tell you up front, the context of the verses is a little bit different than the application that I'm about to use. But since it's a song and not the Bible, I think I can take a little more liberties on the context than I would if it was right. Scripture. And the, and the course of that song says this, Will you love Jesus more when we go our different ways? When the moment is a memory, will you remember His face? Will you look back and realize you sensed His love more than you did before? I pray for nothing less than for you to love Jesus more. You see that? Think about that for a moment. When you go your separate ways from the people you interact with, family, friends, brothers and sisters in the church, co-workers, whatever else, does it leave people with a sense and a desire to love Jesus more? When you and I have our interactions in whatever setting, spiritual or natural, when we go our separate ways, will my time with you impact you to want to love Jesus more? Will my attitude... Will the things we talk about, the way we talk about them, when we go our separate ways, is it going to inspire you to love Jesus more? Or when we go our separate ways, is it, is it going to cause you to have a little bit of reluctance that, do I really want to? I mean, if that's a representation, do I really want to pursue? Please don't shut me off tonight. Come on. Come on. Please, please don't shut me off tonight. Listen to, what, listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 16 or 17. Let's listen to what he... I, I, am, I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achacus, Achacus, uh, however you say all those. For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. What he, if you read some of the other translations, that last statement there is not a criticism or an accusation. What he was saying was what you couldn't. Meaning what, what you were not able to do, not because you didn't have the ability, but, but legitimate circumstances and situations prevented you from, from providing something. They have supplied what you couldn't. In verse 18 he says, For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. The Amplified says it this way, I'm happy because of those guys. 
because they have come to me, for they have made up for your absence. Makes it a little clearer there. He's not just, that wasn't a slur, that wasn't a dig when he said the way the King James says it. But then he says, for they gave me respite from labor and rested me and refreshed my spirit as well as yours. Deeply appreciate and thoroughly know and fully recognize such men. Men that when you have interacted with them, and using men here in a generic sense, not gender specific per se, people who when you have interacted with them and you go your separate ways, you you feel like you've gotten a break from your labor and you feel like you have rested and you feel like they have refreshed your spirit. In the book of Philemon, which is only one chapter, verse 4, says this, I thank my God. Paul is speaking to Philemon, Philemon. All my life I said, pronounced it Philemon until we met Philemon, who now goes to abundant life, so I don't know which one it is. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus, and, and toward all saints, By this shall you know, by this shall they know, that you're my disciples, that you believe in one God. That's the identifier, right? And that's what Jesus said. The way they'll know you're my disciples is that you believe in one God. Oh, you're right, that one. Oh, no, that's right. The way they'll know you're my disciples is because you speak in tongues. No? Oh, oh, okay, well then surely it's this one. The way they'll know you're my disciples is because you have been baptized in Jesus' name. Everybody's saying no, but some of us, that's the way we act. Bless God, people are going to know I'm a disciple of Jesus because you haven't done this or you don't believe that. I'm going to tell you off. No. The way they'll know you're my disciples is not by your tongue talking. It's not by the way you dress. It's not by what you believe about the Godhead. It's not by the way you worship. The way they'll know you're my disciples is that you have love one for another. And not just love for the world, but love for one another, brother and sister. We've heard of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus, but not just toward the Lord Jesus, it's what you also have toward all saints. When you get done... Again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about any, I'm talking about the settings where you gather together to fellowship, to hang out, that it's not, you're not praying, you're not digging in the word, you're just spending time together. When people leave you, will they love Jesus more? Will there be something in there that draws them closer to Jesus? In, 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 in the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah says this, and, and I know this is prophetic, and, and, and it's, you know, there's some typology and all that in there, and I'm not going to get into all of that, but I think I can use an application of this. The, the Bible says in Jeremiah 8.22, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? And, 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 and that balm of Gilead is referring to like a, a salve or a a cream for healing? Is there no healing balm? And and then the question is, is there no physician there? And and, and symbolically, when he says, is there no physician there, that's referencing, are, are there no priests? Are there no prophets? 
The answer to the question, is there no balm in Gilead, is yes, there is. And is there no physician there? Yes, there is. Why then is the health of the daughter of, the, of my people? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Is there no, is there no healing balm? Is there no one to speak healing words? Is there no one to speak encouraging words? Is there no one to speak in, is no one to speak comforting words? And there's some there's some men of God that I have had the great privilege of getting to be around throughout my life. That I'm telling you, when I when I walked away from them, when I had been in their presence, I I I felt like I had been as close to Jesus as you could get. One of those men, some of you know, especially those of you who've been around Antioch for years, you you know, and if you haven't been around for years, you've at least heard the name. But one of those men was Brother William Cisco. I'm going to tell you, when I walked away from him, if you want to ask me the question, will you love Jesus more when you and him go your separate ways? Absolutely. There's some, brother, 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 I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I keep trying to understand some things. I know some of you, you've grown up spiritually and matured enough, you don't try to understand it anymore. Pray for me. I usually never understand it, and he never really tells me why, but I still try to figure it out. I, I, I brother, brother Ron Libby, pastor, founded the church basically in Gaithersburg, now in Imesville, CLC. Just about everybody here has been there for something, ladies' conference, youth stuff, whatever. I've, I've sat in his office a few times throughout my life. The bar, it's like as close as you could get to being yeah. the, 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 the balm, yep. the healing balm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I don't remember who I heard make this statement, and I may not remember exactly the way they said it, but, but the, the gist of it was this, principle supersedes personality. Well, I'm not just a, I'm not really a very affectionate person. I'm not really a very feeling touching person. Well, guess what? Your God is. He's touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He 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 knows our frame. He remembers that we are but... Uh, I, I know there's some times and situations in which Jesus, when he was on this... I, I know he went into the temple and turned over tables and got a whip and drove... I, I, I know there... But, 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 but the, I don't think that was the daily default nature of Jesus. I think on a daily, regular basis, when people had their encounters and interactions with Jesus, and He walked away, they're like, I, I want to love Him more. I want to be around Him more. I'll be, I'm going to be, I'm a, I, I always try to be. I don't know why I even say it. I just try to be it. But I, 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 I have found myself for months now I, I want to always say whatever God wants me to say. As, as hard to hear as it may be, as uncomfortable as it may be, for if it's what God wants said, I want to say it. But what I don't want to do and what I know I have done at times is I have let my fleshly Flavor. <laughs> you ever had, you ever drank something where you, you, you could tell that it, maybe it was a, in a pitcher that had some other drink in it previously and now, and, and you still can kind of taste the flavor? I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to taint the flavor. And I, I have found myself at times putting a little bit of a agitation and an aggravation on some things that 
I may have been saying what he wanted me to say, but I let my humanity I got the truth. That you do. And if anybody had the truth, Jesus had the truth. <laughs> he looks up at Zacchaeus up in that tree. He didn't look up in there and say, You better get down here, you scoundrel. You cheating tax collector, cheating all these people out. You better, you better get out of that tree before I hit it with a bolt of lightning. He said, Zacchaeus, come on down from there. I'm I'm coming to your house today. I don't think it was, I'm coming to your house. You, I, think there, I think there was something in that, that he was, there was probably a sense of intimidation. You ever, you ever had that moment when you, you were in, you knew you were in trouble when you were a kid. You knew you were in trouble. And you knew, you were waiting on the hammer to drop. And instead of the hammer dropping, you, you know, your dad just starts being all nice and kind. And you're like, no, that's not what... Let's go. Let's get this over with. I know what I did. I know what I deserve. Let's just let's just go ahead and and and, and punish me. I don't I don't that I don't think Zacchaeus felt that when Jesus said, "Hey, come on, come on down. I'm I'm I'm, I'm coming to your house, Zacchaeus." Paul said, "We we 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 uh, we were." We, we felt refreshed and rested by, by being around these guys. I think we need a lot more people than just the two names I've mentioned. And there are people there. And there, there, there are people here. There's people I, I can look across this place tonight that if I have... If I, can, if I can have an opportunity just to hang around and be around you, I'm all in. Because it's, 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 it, it's not just your words. There's just something that emanates from you. There's something that flows from you that you, you leave that interaction and there's something that says, man, I, I want to love Jesus more. I, I want to be, be more like them because of how much they are like Jesus. Is there? Yes, there is. And there are people that God has intended and designed to be the physicians to apply. Again, I'm, I'm not talking. There, there's times we, we, we need to be, we need to be talked to straight. <laughs> we need somebody to tell us the truth. But even the tooth, even even the tooth, even the truth, ought to be told in love. Truth is not a weapon to beat somebody upside the head with to get them to straighten up. That's not the way God intended for it to be used. They beat you upside the head with truth. But no, I want there to be something in me that when I, when I leave you, Not that there's nobody here tonight in this category, but in my life, other places in the past. There are people that I'm like, no, I, I don't have a choice but be around them. I don't. But you walk away and there's a, ugh. Because all that just flows out is criticism. Gossip. Nitpicking this, finding fault with that, and you... You leave with this, ah. Uh. Yes, and there's some others, you, you know, you, hey, and then you leave them. and Hey, man, how you doing? I'm okay. <laughs> you excited about what God is doing and what God? I guess so. <laughs> As Tigger bounces by excitedly. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Oh. Just this. Ooh. I don't I don't want to offend anybody with this. So if I offend you, you don't 
have a choice but to forgive me if you want to go to heaven. Amen. So do yourself a favor. Don't hold the grudge because you might not have tomorrow. So and I, I don't I don't like I have a pet peeve with using movies and whatever's and all that as examples or themes. You all know that the churches use movies for themes for message series. I don't I don't usually do this, so humor me for a moment. But there was an old Jerry Lewis movie, <laughs> The Disorderly Orderly. <laughs> Mrs. Fuzzy Bee. He was trying to work at this place, hospital type place, whatever. But the problem is, every every ailment somebody had, he would had like these sympathy pains, and he felt it. There's some people you get around, man, and by the time they're done, you're like, oh, my God, I'm dying. <laughs> I went to the doctor with this pain, and the doctor says, I got six months to live. Hold on. What, what pain is that? Hey, oh, oh, man, I got that same pain, too. <laughs> Romans 12 and 9. Amplified Bible. Let your love be sincere, a real thing. Hate what is evil. Loathe all ungodliness. Turn, it, turn in horror from wickedness, but hold fast to that which is good. Verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family, giving precedence and showing honor to one another. I tell you what, when you're around people that act that way and treat you that way, you walk away wanting to love Jesus more. Amen. Wanting to know Jesus more. What kind of, uh, I, you know, Song of Solomon is a book you never want to preach from. There's too much stuff in there you don't want to. Do you know, there, there's, there's, I forget the chapter, but, but uh, it talks about, uh, she talks about her beloved who has come, but she's already, she's already got, she's already got settled in bed, and, 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 and so, you know, she, she doesn't want to be inconvenienced, and, and so her beloved comes to the door, and, and, you know, he knocks, and she doesn't respond quick enough, and he leaves, and, and, and she, she talks about that, 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 that his, his, his perfume, his cologne, was dripping from the doorknob. He left, he left his fragrance. What, what kind of fragrance? And I'm not talking, needless to say, I'm not talking literal, natural. What kind of fragrance is left behind where you've been? Do people come into an atmosphere where you've been and there's just something lingering there where they're just like, I, man, I can't explain it, but there's just such a, there's such a peace here. There's, I just feel, I feel compassionate. There have been a few times, I, I wish it would happen more, there have been a few times in, 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 in my years of marriage where I've had people come to my house and say, man, there's just, there's just such a peace here. You should have been here 30 minutes ago. We had a we had a section three. I don't know if I've ever really said this publicly. We had a, we had a section three pastors fellowship uh, Monday night and hosted it at our house. And we had a we had um, four I think pastors from section three and their wives and and then brother and sister Reaver also came as the district superintendent. And and we were kind of about to get settled at the dinner table, and Brother Reaver asked me, "So where where was your where was your setup for videoing for COVID?" Of course, it was right in our living room. And so we we got into everybody kind of chimed in for a few moments about that. And uh, my wife told anybody remember that one? I think it was an evening where um, the uh, the, uh, um, the uh, UPS guy came up the driveway and I'm, you know, I'm standing in my living room talking to nobody in my coat and tie <laughs> as he walks up and we make eye contact, you know, it's like, do you look or not? And, 
But, but the other part, I, I don't know if we've ever told you all this, but I'm going to tell you something. There were a couple of Sunday mornings especially that at, that at 9.55, sometimes I think at 9.59, there was such tension. It's a couple of times some yelling between siblings at 9.59. And all y'all saw was my lovely wife. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and those that were on camera, the girls and Nathaniel, they're all standing there smiling. And I mean, what you don't see is the blood dripping down their backs. <laughs> You ever, you ever, you ever had that experience where you just, you were in, in new, and I'm not talking about church. I mean, hopefully we feel that a lot at church, but I'm talking about, man, you're just, you're just, you're saying, man, there's just the, 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 the aroma, the fragrance that is, that is left behind. Are people, are people coming behind you with, uh, what do you call it? Spray, air fresh, yeah, air freshener. You have people, you know, at, at the circus, <laughs> at the circus, they have guys, their job is to walk with a shovel and a scoop thing. Who, who's walking behind you? What, what kind of, what kind of, I, I know, I, I, you know what, it's amazing. After, after, at 52 years old, I, I've said it, I'm more comfortable with who I am now than ever, but I still struggle because I know there's, there, I, I got, I did, and probably just, maybe it's just the devil, but I know yeah, there's so many of you that if we were talking gifts of the Spirit here tonight and word of wisdom and how do you operate in the word of knowledge and, and, and how do you discerning of spirit, you'd be on the edge of your seats. I'm going to say what I said at the beginning. There's just as much in those epistles of what I'm talking to you about tonight. The gifts may help somebody get the Holy Ghost and pray through. But what I'm talking about tonight is what's going to keep people in the body. Keep people in the kingdom. Keep healthy relationships amongst us. The Passion Translation says it this way, verse 9, Let the inner movement of your heart. I just heard, I, I just heard, I, I, not heard, I just read as I was going on. I don't, the Passion Translation is not on the software program I have. It's too old. And so I, I noticed uh, an article today that there's one of these Bible sites that has all kinds of translations. They have removed the Passion Translation. So, as I've said many times, I, when it comes to doctrinal studies, I think the King James is pretty accurate and you ought to, but there's some good flavor in the other ones. So, Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another and never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. <laughs> Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in how many solos you get on the worship team. Try to outdo each other in how many invitations you get to go preach someplace. Try to outdo each other in the role and the title that you have in the body. No. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. If we're going to have some competition around here, let's have competition about how we respect and honor one another. If we're going to get in competition over something, let's get in top competition. The Bible, I believe it's in Hebrews, I think, it talks about provoking one another. Yeah, 
Provoke one another. Go ahead and provoke one another. But provoke one another to good works. Not to anger, not to bitterness, not to resentment, but provoke one another to good works. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. Will you love Jesus more? You know, there have been several times lately, I said it a couple weeks ago, but I mean this in a little different context. There, you know, there have been some things through the years, and especially this year, there's some things that I've preached to you that are really good and helpful for you, but they're not for me. <laughs> I didn't preach them for me to have to practice them. <laughs> you need to trust God. You need to have faith in No matter how bad things look, you need to keep believing. And, and I've all, I'm also, I'm now, I'm now, and in some ways I've been in it to a degree for a while, but it's, it feels to me it's coming more and more pronounced. Brother Barr, I'm finding myself more and more in situations where I'm on the leader side, the authority side of a conversation, and I'm having to remember what I wanted when I was in the other seat. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. And now not be hypocritical and not give what it was I wanted. I wanted, and through the years, thank God, Bishop has been this way so many times, but I, I wanted somebody that was leading me that, that if we disagreed, I could express my disagreements and not get hammered for it. I wanted somebody that I could express my perspective and what I felt like God showed me and was telling me, even if it was different, and them not be rejected by me. That's really easy on the other side of the desk. And now, so many times sitting on the Again, the side with the authority and the leader or whatever, and I'm having to go, uh, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Yeah, but that was different back then. <laughs> you better be careful what it is you expect and maybe even demand out of those leading you. Because it's easy when you're on your side. When you're on the other side and thinking about all those things, and, 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 and I've, it, it's, it's, we all want people to be patient with us when we say things out of emotion. We want people to accept that sometimes, I know, I'm going to just do a little, little marriage sidetrack here. I know the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But I'm going to tell you, I believe with all of my heart, there, and I don't, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to throw my wife under the bus here, and I hope she could say the same thing about me. But since I'm the one that's ministering here tonight, there have been some times through the years in our marriage where my wife was in a, going through stuff, and there was stuff that maybe God was doing some new stuff in her healing-wise from stuff from the past, where she said things to me that, that I believed with all of my heart was not what was really in her heart. She was struggling. She was wounded. Let me tell you, let me tell you married folks something. If you've been longer, married longer than me and you don't live this, then God bless you, but you're probably miserable. But that's... <laughs> If you want to stand by, well, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, so be it. But don't sit there and tell me you've never had moments of frustration and struggle where something came out of your mouth based on hurt or offense that you didn't really mean, but that's... And the bottom line is even if you don't mean it, doesn't mean it doesn't hurt to a degree and sting. But It's really easy to want somebody... To give you that grace. It's a whole different thing when you're now in the position of having to 
You know what? I Boy, that kind of stung, but I know you didn't. You know how many dead bodies there would have been in Jesus' day if he'd have just gone around zapping everybody? That be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow what? Hello, your fellow what? Can I get a few more of you? Your fellow what? Not the sinner. I've said it many times, I'm going to keep saying it. Many of us do a much better job of loving the sinner than we do our fellow believers. Well, they know better. And you don't? Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. And I, I, I'm going to, it's going to take a couple of minutes, but I want to, I, I want to, I want to read to you. I know many of you know this passage and probably have, many of you probably read it many times, but I, I, I'm just doing what I feel. I'm, but I, I want to read this chapter again to you. And I'm going to do it from the Passion Translation. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul is talking about one of the places. Paul is talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, gift of healing, working them, all these. That's, man, that's the chapter we want to live in. Anybody wants to live in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Anybody's volunteering for what's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But he follows that up with this. If I were to speak with eloquence in earth's many languages and in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet I didn't express myself with love, my words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. Your telling, of telling truth to people is not enough. Well, it's the truth. The fact that it's the truth doesn't justify you telling it with some kind of attitude or, or upset, angry spirit. If I can speak in all kinds of languages, Paul says, but if it is not with love, my words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. And if I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possess unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. Come on, I, I, I think I can say this. Let's be honest. I mean, that meant faith to move mountains. That's the, that's the goal. We all want to be mountain movers. Paul says, if I can move mountains, but I don't, have, I don't have love, I'm nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a martyr without the pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. There's a, I don't have it included in here, but there's a footnote there for the word martyr that says it can also be translated in the context of if I would do all of this so that I can brag and boast. Look at all I've given away. Look at all I've done for everybody. But if I don't have it, the pure motive of love, I will gain nothing of value. Love. Now watch this. Watch, watch these next couple of verses are a description of what love is. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. I think you might need to pause and take a just 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 to analyze some things. If in the context of wherever you minister at any kind of a regularity, that there is a there is a consistent edge and sharpness to you. 
Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. I've I've said this to a few people. I don't remember if I've said it publicly or not, but the the couple of times that Brother Bourne has been here, and especially this 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 year when he was here back in June, I think it was. I mean, what a what a from my perspective, my experience, I would say he's one of the most powerful men of God I've ever had the opportunity to be around. He's old enough to be my dad. He's I think he's actually like a year or so older than my dad. And I mean, on, on a regular basis in the couple of days he was here, we would interact. If I would say something to him as a question or whatever, the, the, the response was, yes, yes, sir. I'm, like, I'm thinking to myself, why in the world are you saying yes, sir, to me? I, I get me saying yes, sir, to you. I was raised to say yes, sir, yes, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Not because of my dad being raised in the military. From my perspective, it had more to do with the influence of the South and the way my parents were raised. I I think there's a level of respect to that. So, I mean, this, this, this amazing, powerful man of God, I mean, some of the stories I've heard him tell of prophecies and things that God, and he's, and he's, yes, sir. I mean, in this very humble way, I'm, you know, it made me want to crawl under the chair. I mean, it wasn't like, yeah, I, you, you better say yes, sir. It's like, what in the world? I mean, what? Love does, not tra- love, love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Ooh, Jesus. So if you're easily irritated or quick to take offense, that means you're, you're actually not a loving person. That's what it says. <laughs> Most of the time, we don't think of offense in the category of love. But if you're easily offended or quick to take offense, then, then you don't love. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. <laughs> how many of you have ever have been prophesied to in a service by one of these men of God or women of God that, that gave you a prophecy, a word of knowledge, a prophetic word that it was good. It was on target. But you don't remember what they said. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Our present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters, for I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured and set aside my childish ways. For now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries as though reflected in a mirror. But one day we will see face to face. My understanding is incomplete now, but one day I will understand everything just as everything about me has been fully understood. Until then, there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else... Let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Not word of wisdom, word of knowledge, gift of prophecy. 
That's not the thing to strive for, but love. Strive for the kind of attitude and spirit and character and nature that when people part ways with you, they're going to love Jesus more. The footnote of the Passion Translation is where this is from. There are ten characteristics in this chapter of love. First, love is patient under stress. Two, it is kind at all times. Three, it is generous, not envious. Kind at all. You ever had, you ever had an interaction with a server at a restaurant when something was brought out that was not right? They messed, they didn't cook your steak right or whatever. And you can tell from that server the second they realize something's not right, they, they almost go into panic mode. Because it is very obvious that plenty of customers have let them have it for the fact that the guy in the back didn't properly cook. I went to, uh, I went to take something back. I wasn't trying to throw my wife under the bus on the other one, but I might be a little bit on this one. <laughs> you know what it's like to walk into Home Depot with a loaded shopping cart of things that were purchased online to be returned? And I asked the lady at the counter, I'm like, please tell me. Please tell me I'm not the only husband in the world who comes in helping their wife out to return all the stuff that was ordered online that didn't work. Oh, no, it happens all the time. Okay, great. <laughs> I didn't have all the right receipts, and I didn't have the credit card that it was per. And, and so, I mean, this lady was going through all kinds of effort and trying to trying to figure out from my phone and this and that and trying and 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 several times she's like she literally she says to me sir I, I'm very sorry thank you so much for your patience and I'm like you're thanking me for my patience I feel like I'm supposed to be thanking you for your patience because I got this shopping cart of stuff and I don't have any easy way for you to. But you could tell by, the, by what she was saying that, that what she's used to is, even if it's her fault, love is, love is kind at all times. It's generous, not envious. Wow. It's humble, not self-promoting. Is never rude. It does not manipulate by using shame. It does not manipulate to, to, to get its way. It's not irritable or easily offended. It celebrates honesty. It does not focus on what is flawed. And is loyal to the end. What is, what is the fragrance you're leaving behind? I, let, let, let's, 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 I know this is about as practical as you can get here tonight. I get that. That's the story of much of my ministry. I, I, when, when, you, when, when you walk out of the the family room or the living room at your house and your family is still sitting there, your kids are still sitting there. What, what, what is the fragrance? What, and I'm not talking about perfection here. I'm not talking about never having a moment of... I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the overarching atmosphere and, 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 and impression that is left behind. They walk away, You walk away... And there is a sense in your spouse and your kids and your parents. Man, they, they make me want to love Jesus more. They challenge me to be more like Jesus. Just, I, I hope you have some people in your life like this, but 
I've named a couple, and there's, there's people around here. Just, just, just kind of getting to be in, the, in their presence. They're not God, but getting to be in their presence, there's just something that, as, as Paul referenced those three guys, there's just something that just, it's, it's like, it's almost like you get hooked up to an IV with them. There's just, there's just something that gets transmitted. I, I, I'm sorry, but I think every single one of us should be striving to be like that. To be striving that people want to be in your presence. Again, not, uh, we, just, we just read love. Love is not arrogant, proud. It's, I'm not talking about building up yourself thinking you're all that in a bag of chips, but people want to be around you. People want to love Jesus more when they go their separate ways from you. I don't remember hearing this directly from him. I feel like I heard somebody share it, but I believe years ago, I believe it was this was pre-COVID that that uh, my, my brother shared in, in one of his messages at Antioch West that there was this there was this survey done of, of servers at restaurants. And it had to do with what day of the week do you choose or would you prefer the most to not work? Anybody know what the day was? Sunday. Why would we think they didn't want Sunday? Because they don't want to work Sunday because they want to go to church. If I remember the story correctly, a pastor actually brought one of those servers to his, used them in his message. And the reasoning they didn't want to work on Sundays is not so they could go to church. It was so they didn't have to serve the church people after church because they were some of the rudest and most difficult people to deal with. It's not the kind of fragrance. I'm going to, I think, kind of close with this story I've told a number of times. If you don't know it, don't know the punchline yet, it's probably not going where you think it's going. I think it was my last year of youth camp as an attendee at youth camp. I was like 18. And back in the day for youth camp, there was youth choir, or there was choir, and every camper participated. Because in those days, we had a bunch of adults in the service at night. And so it wasn't that everybody sang in the choir. And every afternoon was choir practice in the heat of the day. I'm sure it's not this way anymore with all you awesome young people. But back in that day, apparently some folks didn't really know what the shower was about. And that's all right on the first day, maybe the second. But you get past that, you got people sweating and playing sports and all that. It, as we would say in the 80s, it would be hooping in there. <laughs> and I'm sitting down on the choir loft one day for choir practice. And they were doing either the sopranos or the altos were doing learning their parts. And so the guys, it wasn't our turn. So I'm just sitting on the step. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, somebody, one of these guys is one of those guys. I don't know who it is, but he hadn't been in the shower for a couple days, and this is stinking. And I'm sitting there kind of on the floor, little, I think, small step, kind of sitting there, knees kind of up, kind of bent over on my knees, and and uh, COVID, uh, COVID has affected my smell. Um, I used to have a really good sniffer, and now uh, people are, you smell that? And I'm like, what? I don't, so back in that day, I had a good sniffer. And I started honing in on where that smell was coming from. And much to my surprise, I realized it was coming from my shoes. <laughs> wow. 
And what I had been sitting there so smugly thinking about everybody else around me, I was the source of it. I left that choir practice that day, and Angie and I were dating at the time, going together. I need you to do me a favor. There was a washer. I don't know if it's still there. Back in the day, there was a washing machine on Roxbury Campground. I need you to do me a favor and throw these shoes in the washer really quickly. You might want to be careful sometimes when you're always smelling the same stink nowhere or where you go. It might, it might not be everybody else. There, there may be, I had somebody tell me why. Well, I went to this church for a while and I, it just didn't work. And then I went and tried this one and it really wasn't working. So now I'm thinking about, and I thought, I didn't say it because I, I, I usually can keep in what I think pretty well. <laughs> but I was thinking, do you not notice the pattern? No matter where you go, something's wrong. There's a chance it might not be every body else. I think maybe the reason nights tight tonight God gives me the way he gives it to me because it's one of the ways in which I have the most confidence that I hear from God. Because in that morning part where I'm half asleep, half awake, I am as neutral as I am any other time of day. I'm not trying to be unkind. I'm not trying to do what I said earlier. I'm trying not to do what I mean. What we love, pause, and we love all that stuff. And pause is once a week, once a year, folks. <laughs> we come together two days out of the week at the most. This is such a small, small part. I got a question, is there a, not a bomb? <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah, we got a bomb in my house. <laughs> not a bomb. Is there a bomb in your home? I hope there's some balm in your oikos. I hope there's, some, there's somebody that knows how to apply the balm of Gilead in your, in your friend group, <laughs> amongst the people you associate with. I really believe all of us are supposed to be learning how to do that. Yes. Will you love Jesus more? Will people love Jesus more when they go their separate ways from you? Will they look back and realize they've sensed His love more than before? I've preached it or I've taught it more so a number of times. Some of you need to reread the book of Acts. When the apostles encountered people that didn't believe the full truth yet, when the apostles came into places where people hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name yet or received the Holy Ghost yet, Read their reactions, their responses. They came, they came across some of the disciples of John. You got the Holy Ghost? They said, well, what's the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. They haven't even heard of such a thing. They didn't respond. What? Are you kidding me? You don't? No. no. Love controlled the conversation. Love controlled the actions, the attitude. I believe uh, this is I'm just this is naturally speaking. I know I'm up here teaching and ministering, so I'm qualifying. This is naturally speaking. I believe the two <coughs> safest places in the world ought to be your home and the church. Amen. 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 The two places in the world where you feel as comfortable as you can to be. And I'm not talking about 
you know, cussing and spitting. And not, I mean, just to, where you know you're the most loved and accepted. Exactly. Exactly. Ought to be your home and ought to be the, the church. I don't mean the church building. I mean the body. And if we live by 1 Corinthians 13, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can promise you that is absolutely what will happen. Father, I pray that you would help us tonight. Lord, we have been so blessed through the years that we've been taught and trained and equipped with some awesome spiritual things, spiritual gifting, spiritual knowledge and understanding. We know how to do spiritual warfare. We know how to operate in the spirit. We have people in this room tonight that are used on a regular basis in the gifts of the spirit. I thank you for all of that. We can't, we can't accomplish what you've called us to do without those things, God. But Lord, as, I, as, as, we've re- as I've read here tonight after Paul deals with some of those very things, he comes back with an entire chapter, at least the way our Bibles are broken up today, an entire chapter, Lord, about how we love one another, the way we're supposed to love one another, and that it's not those gifts and chapter 12 that we're supposed to be all about pursuing, but it's, it's the love. That's the best gift. Help us tonight. Lord, I pray tonight. I don't... I, actually, I guess I pray it in all kinds of ways as a pastor, as a pastor. And I pray as a husband, as a father, as a father-in-law, as a grandfather, as a, as a brother, as an uncle as a friend, as a customer, uh, whatever, the, whatever the setting, God. When I leave that setting, I want people to want to love you more. I want there to be things that flow through me and things that emanate from me, not just about the words that are said, but the attitude and the spirit that radiates, that causes people to want to love you more. I pray for my brothers and sisters here tonight that that would be their same hunger and desire. Lord, I'm in no way minimizing or discouraging us from wanting to learn and be used in the operation of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, but at the same time, help us not to be so enamored with that that we forget some of these basics, some of these fundamentals that are just as important. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.